give a warm welcome to your host, Pat Bishop. Thank you, Annie. Well, I've, I've got the distinct pleasure of introducing our guest today. Uh, I want to first of all thank you, uh, those of you that are here today with us in person and those of you watching online. My name is Pat Bishop and I am the Director of Graduate Studies here at Full Sail University. And I am your host for this session titled Brand New You, a Multi-Day Personal Branding Workshop. So here's a short video about Phil before we get started. I'm in the business of crafting first impressions. It is my job to make sure that in three seconds or less, people remember you. Because if you lose them, you've lost them forever. The democratization of media is a beautiful thing because it means that we can all be creators and podcasters and photographers without being experts, without going to school for this. But it's equally terrifying because now that everyone is creating content, it's so much harder to get noticed. My clients are jewelry designers, celebrities, public figures, politicians, small businesses. I get to talk to really interesting people as part of this career. Now I get to teach people in different countries and cultures how to build a brand. I reached a point where I thought, I need to let others in. I need to let people eavesdrop on this amazing information that I learn from my peers, my clients, my friends. And that's where my podcast was really born from. And I want to inspire others to take their passion and turn it into a brand. I'm so lucky because I get to do what I love. This is a job, are you kidding me? I have the best job in the world. Okay, everyone, please put your hands together and welcome our guest, Phil Palin, brand strategist and owner of Phil Palin Collective. Thank you, Pat. I came up early to give you a hug. Good. Yeah. Glad you did. Thank you so much for that amazing intro. Thank you to this beautiful room. Look at all of you. You woke up so early to be here. It's 9 a.m. and you look so sharp. I love the fact that you're here. Of all places, you could be sleeping right now, but you picked me over sleep. What a compliment. In fact, you know what makes you extra special today? All of you, every single one of you, in the room and online, you're my Valentine today, because it's a Valentine's Day. Yes. We are gonna be so productive this morning. I'm so happy you're here. I know some of you, some of you are familiar faces. Some of you are brand new. We'll be friends after this. Don't worry. I'll tell you how to keep in touch with me. We're going to build amazing brands today. Some of you are building a brand from scratch. Some of you are taking inventory of what you've already built to make it better. We're going to go through all of that this morning because you took the initiative to show up and be here. So I'm so happy you did that. So I, oh my gosh, can you believe it? I graduated. Uh, 2011, and every year at Hall of Fame, I've always been, you know, kind of excited to be like the youngster at Hall of Fame. But this is the first year where there's even younger people showing up, and now I'm getting threatened. Because <laughs> every year passes, I just keep getting older, but I'm very, very happy to be here. I love coming back for Hall of Fame. It's, ex it's as exciting for me as it is for you, you know, to meet the most talented, incredible, people that all come from all over the world to be here for these few days. So this is really, you know, not to get preachy and lame, but really the next few days are very, very exciting. And in fact, they could change your career. One single interaction could mean getting an internship, could mean getting a job. In fact, I'm scheduled for, for a few talks over the next few days. Don't worry, if you're online, you'll be able to watch them too. Um, you know, green room sessions here on campus, and then a few sessions that are gonna be live streamed. I'll kind of, throughout the talk, um, give you a preview of what's to come. One of the sessions that we're doing tomorrow morning, actually, Pat Bishop, my dear friend Pat, who introduced me, uh, Pat and I will be doing a session, this time tomorrow, live streamed, that'll be about uh, a focus on social media, but I'm actually gonna feature 
I've gone back and, and had little chats with a few of the most, in my opinion, most successful grads since, well, graduating from Full Sail. I asked them advice. I said, what advice do you wish you knew now that you've been out in the real world? I said, what do you wish you knew when you graduated? That's something, and they gave me great answers, but I'm not going to tell you. That's a little teaser, so you have to stay tuned for tomorrow. You see, how I, you see what I did there? Yeah. So that's coming tomorrow. But um, it fascinates me. I almost obsess over this idea of figuring out how all of you can be successful the moment you graduate. It's stressful, isn't it? Because you want to plan. You want to have all these things lined up, ready to go. You know, even if you're six months out from graduation, for example, you're thinking, okay, what's my job going to be? What am I going to do the moment I graduate? And here's the cute part. You have no idea what the answer is to that question. You literally have no idea. And you'll plan, and you think you know, and you've got everything lined up, but you have no idea what's in store for you. So as I think about that question, and I speak with students that are now out killing it, um, you know, I think about, I think about being in that place again as a student, which was really not that long ago for me. I think about being in that position, that uncomfortable yet exciting position of not really knowing what's next. And, and so my, my advice to kick things off, Hall of Fame, I think I'm kicking this off, am I not? I feel like Britney Spears at this microphone, so it's good. I feel like I can kick this off. Who trusted me with that responsibility? <laughs> You know, I think, about, I think about that uncomfortable position that you're all in, and I can say safely from this side that you just have to embrace it. You know, you really have to just kind of embrace the uncertainty and know that if you work hard, you're in good hands. All of this will work out. Today, we'll be productive. We'll talk about your brands. In my opinion, having a brand will help you. It will increase, I should say, it will increase the likelihood that you'll be successful, that you'll stand out, that you'll create a memorable first impression. That's really the name of the game now. Welcome to 2017. Some of you know me um, from this panel discussion that I think actually happened in this room a few years ago. I met a few students yesterday at the Career Expo, and many of you said, I've always wanted to meet you, but I haven't met you in real life. I watched your um, panel, which we did a few years ago. That I think was the first year I came back for Hall of Fame. And I did a panel uh, about, about branding, personal branding. And I was feeling especially spicy that day. <laughs> I was bringing my SAS A game, and I you know, was talking about how really this isn't about you, and this session was called you.com or something like that. And I was like, that's the irony of this, is that it really actually is not about you. And, and the number one mistake that grads make, and now I know this because I'm in the position where I hire people. Yeah, so you better suck up, exactly. Um, I'm in the position where I hire people, and that's the number one mistake people are making, right? They're, they're going in and they're saying, this is what I talked about at the panel, and which I think is now like required I was going to say required reading, but I think it's required watching now for full sales students. The, the mistake they make is they go in and they, they say, here are my passions. Here's what I want to accomplish. When your employer's kind of going, okay, great, but really, I'm hiring you. I'm making an investment in you. I'm bringing you on within my company to make me money in some way, shape, or form. They're paying you a salary. That salary is an investment that you will deliver something of value. And so it's really kind of committing to that idea and knowing that every interaction you have, it's great if you are pursuing your passions, but it's more important that you think about the person in the driver's seat because it's, it's, chances are you will have that internship, you'll have that job to start where you might not be in the driver's seat, which is totally okay. And at the time, you know, it's always, especially in entertainment, right? There's always that joke that you're going to be, uh, it's not really a joke, it's real life for a lot of people, but, you know, delivering coffee and sweeping the floors. That could be your first job. Um, that's just kind of how it works. And, and so in the moment when you're in those jobs, it kind of sucks. But then you look back on it and you learn a lot 
by being in those positions to, to, you know, get things started, kick things off, if you will. And I think back now, having graduated a few years ago and having done jobs like that, I'm grateful for those opportunities because you learn what you like to do and you learn what you don't like to do. The people you like to work with and the people you don't like to work with. So all of this is kind of part of the journey, and I think my, my main message with all of you today, and we'll dive into the specifics of, of how to actually make all of this happen. Today I'll do a bit more of an overview of how I approach branding, but my overall message with you this morning here in this room and online is that now more than ever, you can be in that driver's seat. If you take this seriously, you build that memorable first impression, you can essentially create success. You can manifest all of this yourself. That's really exciting because that hasn't always been possible. Maybe that internship is a great idea. Wait till I tell you about my story when I thought I was going to be doing an internship. Some of you know that story, and I'm not going to spend as much time today talking about myself. Shocker. Um, I'm going to make this more about you, because that's why we're here. We're not here for me. Um, but now more than ever, you can be in that driver's seat to create your own opportunities. And I get really fired up about this. We'll talk about job postings and all this nonsense. I don't know why you're wasting energy applying to jobs that are online that a thousand other people that are, you know, they're applying. Why are you doing that? That's such a waste of time. We'll get to that. But first, let me tell you a little bit about me. Um, and so you know exactly. So can we get some slides here? Um, and I will tell you a little bit about how all of this uh, started for me. It was 2011, and um, I was, what was I doing? I think I was four months out of grad, uh, four months before graduation, and I entered, some of you know this story, I entered this competition to become uh, Charlie Sheen's social media intern. Three months before I was set to graduate, um, my friend, who's now my, uh, creative colleague who runs my agency, she sent me this listing to apply because I needed a job. I was in the same position as all of you. I needed something to look forward to, something to fill that void when I graduate. Oh my God, what am I going to do? So she said, um, here, Charlie Sheen is, a, is, is taking on interns. And so 90,000 people applied for this. And um, very long story short, I made it to the top 50 of this competition. I'm very thankful for full sail because I use the facilities here. I use this fancy jib camera that makes me feel like Hollywood, you know, all this stuff. And, and long story short, I made it to the top 50 of this competition and was all set to move out to LA. What, what many people didn't know at the time was while this internship competition with Charlie Sheen was really um, kind of the main thing that people associated me with at the same time through context at Full Sail, I had an opportunity to um, actually intern for Ryan Seacrest, which was actually my dream. So lined up uh, this opportunity one week before I was set to move out. I'm telling you the story anyways. I have a few slides that give context for this, but I can also just tell you which I'm doing. Um, one week before I was set to move out, I um, got, I was at Universal Studios celebrating. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's me. Look at me. That was me in the studio. Look at me. What a bad hairstyle I had. <laughs> so that was me. Um, now it's show and tell. Okay, so you already know this story. This is me. I built this website in one of my full sale classes. That's not something you should do. I was not paying attention to my class, but instead I was building my very first website to document my, this competition. So I, I really had, it's funny to look at this actually, it's kind of embarrassing, but actually I built this here and it first website I ever made and uh, I really had, I was doing a social media contest or a social media campaign before that was even really a thing. So I did over 100 TV radio interviews. I would step out of my full sale classes to do radio interviews. That didn't go to my ego or anything. There I was on the Daily Buzz back when that was filmed here, and I was all over the news. 
Um, any international students here? Yeah, by show of hands, beautiful. I was an international student um, from Canada. In fact, I just got my green card last week. Isn't that exciting? Do you wanna see it? Let me show it to you. But don't zoom in, because I don't want anyone to steal my identity. Look at it. Clap again, this was a lot of work. <laughs> So that's, you know, that's, I actually show that just because I know how stressful it is for the international students that just raise their hands. I know how stressful this process is in terms of visas and trying to stay in the country. I get it, but that's proof that it's possible. So back to the Charlie Sheen business. This was the article that came out one week before I was set to move. Toronto Star, entertainment section, the headline, forget Sheen, hello Seacrest. You can't make this stuff up. Because that article is the best and worst thing that ever happened. Love the attention. Phil will never say no to a full page feature. Great, you want to put my head big and wrap the text around it? Go for it. Loved it. And then um, the VP at Ryan Seacrest called me and said, Phil, I have some bad news. Are you sitting down? I was like, no, I'm at Universal Studios celebrating one week before I'm set to graduate. I thought he was calling to congratulate me when actually he was calling me to fire me. So I got fired one week before I was set to move to LA. I had apartment picked, I don't drive. I do a lot of things, like speak, to, you know, speak on stage, speak in, I'll do anything, but I won't drive, that freaks me out. So had an apartment right around the corner from E, living life, graduating full sale, doing all these interviews, and the VP at Ryan Seacrest called me and said, we have million dollar advertisers that are threatening to drop because you've connected Ryan Seacrest, squeaky clean family brand to Charlie Sheen's brand of cocaine and strippers. Congratulations, you are now without an internship. Pat's laughing, because you remember this, Pat. I called you Friday night. I was like, this is probably inappropriate. I should not be calling the lady who's in charge of this whole business school. But I was like, Pat, something terrible has happened. I got fired and now I don't know what I'm doing with my life. And then I called my mom, who's also here, and I said, this is gonna be funny in a year from now. But it's not funny right now. <laughs> So I moved out to LA with literally nothing. And then the people at Ryan Seacrest, they said, don't talk about this, don't talk about Ryan, don't say you didn't do it, just, just for the love of God, stop talking about anything, <laughs> Yeah, all of this. So they said, okay, fine. So people, all summer, that summer, I graduated in July, people were asking me all summer, so Phil, what's Ryan Seacrest like? Does he work as hard? Does he work that hard? What does he smell like? You're like, you know, all these questions. And I just had to not really talk about it because I wasn't allowed to. That was my warm welcome to LA. So these are the kinds of things that happen in life that you're grateful for six years later because you can come back to Hall of Fame and talk about them. <laughs> but in the moment, <laughs> in the moment, they're stressful. But these are really the, the you know, the, Entrepreneurs talk often about you know, failing or hitting rock bottom and those being the moments that inspire you. It is true, you know, the, the hardest things that you experience are not fun at the time, but a lot of times they'll fuel your drive to become successful. So that was that, and now I do things like this. I travel the world, I speak at conferences primarily, that's my excuse. I'll like book a trip to New Zealand and then find a conference to speak at and then my business pays for everything. <laughs> I shouldn't admit that, should I? Why did I do that? <laughs> you know, it's great because I have a business now. I help people build brands around the world. I speak at conferences and inspire others to build something to show, build a memorable first impression. I often say um, my job is crafting first impressions and speaking is something I love to do. So I've made it something that's a part of my job. And I think my point is, is that all of you, once you figure out what you're passionate about, what you enjoy doing, you can make it a part of what you do. This can be a business. You're in control of that decision. You're about to graduate. Or if you're six months or a year away from that, you're still thinking about that. But you now are at this point in your life where you can make the decision. You can make the decision, okay, Option A, I can go have a boring, stable job that my parents want me to do, become a dentist. No, <laughs> you wouldn't come to Full Sail if you wanted to become a dentist, okay? So that's option A, secure, boring, go work for someone else, let someone else make lots of money off of you and pay you a fraction of it. Or option B, more exciting, 
you can create your own opportunity by building a brand. So this slide shows you some of the very hard-hitting things that I do, like comment on Kylie Jenner's lip injections, and talk about Oprah, and Justin Bieber, and Taylor Swift. I go on the news now every single week, print, TV, and talk about nonsense, <laughs> talk about these things related to my brand. This didn't happen overnight, but I show this slide because when I graduated Full Sail, I still wasn't exactly sure what it was that I wanted to do. Uh, it was Full Sail that made me realize actually branding, so I did Entertainment Business Masters, and it was the branding class with Ken DiGiulio, shout out to Ken, because it was that class that made me go, okay, I need, this, is, this is it. This is what I need to do. That's why Full Sail's great, because it gives you a taste of all of these things that actually you can specialize in when you get out there into the real world. So I made that decision. I moved out to LA when I got fired. You know the story. I got fired, and I thought I was going to become a TV host. And then I realized there were a lot of people in LA that wanted that a lot more than me, people that were willing to go to auditions every single day to try and get a job that they probably wouldn't get and just spend their days trying to get a job. And that was crazy to me. How are you going to pay rent next month? You know? And the hosts, TV hosts, actors, all of these people, this is their lives. And I was like, I want to be a host, but I don't want it that badly. So I realized that in the first month that I moved to LA without an internship, what was I doing? But I, I made this decision, and I don't even know if I made it consciously, but I, I convinced myself that that was not the path for me. And I decided, I don't know how, I don't know when, I will get on television, but I want to be seen as an expert. I want to build something so that I don't have to be desperate like, that's not cute, right? Going into audition and saying, please hire me. I want to host your show when there's like a lineup of a thousand people. That's like desperate. I was like, I, that, I can't. That's just not my world. Instead, I want to build recognition around something that will put me on television a few years later. And that's exactly what happened. I got the call 2015. A friend of mine who I had helped build her website a year prior emailed me at 6 a.m. in L.A. and said, do you know about Kylie Jenner's lip injections? And I replied, because I was awake, ready to go to yoga. I know, how stereotypical, I get it. <laughs> and I said, of course I know about Kylie Jenner's lip injections. They're outrageous. What do you need? She said, show up in an hour and a half, get in an Uber, because she knows I don't drive. <laughs> she said, get in an Uber, because that's how long it's going to take to get to Studio City. <laughs> Get in an Uber in 15 minutes, come to Access Hollywood, and I'm putting you in the lead story as a brand expert. So I went, I did it, it was very exciting, and then I was walking towards the elevator at the end, and she said, hey, Phil, wait, what do we call you again? And that was the moment when I, I don't know what hit me, but something great, uh, I, I said, I'm a celebrity brand expert. So I made the decision on what my title was. That's what ran through the credits. And now I get called by publications almost daily around the world to give comments as a celebrity brand expert. Why? Because I decided that that was my title. <laughs> I was feeling especially creative about right before I got into the elevator. You know, but I, I'm telling you this story because I manifested all this crap on my own. Right? You have the power to actually make all of this happen for you. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Some of you are probably not as, you know, attention starved as me and want to be on TV. You know, but in your own right, there are things that, that you want to achieve and want to accomplish. And I, I'm living proof, again, how lame, but I'm proof that all of this is possible. All of this is more possible with a brand. And that's what we're crafting today. Some of you have watched and attended sessions that I've done, and you know my process for building a brand. Um, I'm going to talk conversationally about this so that, so that you understand. I have uh, kind of break it down into three uh, phases, if you will, and, and Hall of Fame is going to be so fun because they've given me 
sessions throughout the week if you're here on campus, and then if not, I'll be touching on this um, online, I'll be touching on this in the live stream sessions throughout. But I have the opportunity to now, for once, actually dive into specifics on these steps, so I hope you'll, you know, hang out with me this week. You know, but since building all of this, I've had the opportunity to work with, Pat read my bio, really interesting clients from marine biologists, jewelry designers, politicians, reality TV stars, sharks on Shark Tank, you know, all kinds of fancy people. And I think what, I've, what, what I find interesting is that in this job, it gives me an excuse to meet really interesting people. That's probably my favorite part of the job. Um, because I, I, I sometimes have those moments where I'm working with a client, and I'm thinking, man, this is kind of cool because I have an excuse to interact on a daily basis with fascinating people. I think that's what I like most about my job. The second thing I like is that I can do it from everywhere, so I travel like a maniac. Um, who here, by a show of hands, wants a job where they can travel? Just curious. Yeah, great. If you didn't put your hand up, then you're just being lazy. Pay attention. <laughs> Everyone wants to travel. Not everyone will have a job where they can travel whenever they want, but I'm encouraging you to, to have a job when you can travel wherever you want. I just went to Mexico City for a week, and I don't even know why. <laughs> but I got there, and I was like, had brunch with my friend, and I was thinking, okay, the bill's coming. This was like a fancy brunch. Mexico City was so cool. It was so branded, everything. I loved it. And the bill came, and I was expecting it to be like $60, because it was a bougie brunch. And it was $16. And I always think, when I'm in some of these cool places that I get to go, I'm like, why doesn't everyone do this? Why don't people have jobs like this? Because all of you have the power to do this. You can build a brand. You can build a business based on your brand. And if you're smart with the industry and the, you know, the, the focus that you build, you can do it from everywhere. I guess I just don't understand why, why there aren't more people doing this, you know? And so I come back to Full Sail all fired up. And yesterday I was, getting, I was starting to get annoyed when I was at the Career Expo. People are handing me their resumes. I was like, what? I was so dramatic. I was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Pretended like I can actually play base, uh, basketball. You said I don't even know the sport. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can't. Um, but people were handing me resumes. I was like, what is, I don't, no, no, I don't read. I don't, that's not, no, we don't do that. I want to get to know you. I want to know what are you passionate about? How can we build a brand that other people want, are willing to pay for based on your passion? And, and these people were like, you know, all ready to apply to all these online jobs, job postings. Why are you doing that? That's so dumb, <laughs> you know? Career development's probably like, Phil, don't say that. But no, career development loves me because whenever I'm up on this stage, I always say, you've heard this before, if you've been at Full Sail for more than a month and you haven't been to career development yet, we can't be friends. And I want to be friends, so you have to fix it if you haven't been there yet. One of the best, I'd say the best return on investments for me coming to Full Sail was the relationship that I formed with dear Jess Pollock, some of you may have her, she's amazing, shout out to Jess. You know, the, the relationship I formed with career development, in fact, they still call me. I'm like, guys, I'm good, I don't need a job, I'm, I'm okay. You know, but in fact, I'm in the position where I'm hiring full sale students, and that feels pretty darn awesome. It all kind of comes full circle, and it's very cool. But I was annoyed yesterday at the Career Expo because people kept handing me their resume, and they kept telling me, you know, this is what I'm looking for in a job. And I don't know why people are putting so much emphasis on this traditional career world that feels so dumb to me, when in fact you are in the driver's seat to create a brand. I keep saying this, I'm really emphasizing it. You're in the position to create a brand that can manifest success, that can manifest whatever it is you want to achieve, okay? Last time I'll say it. Now let's get to the specifics on how to do this. I have a very specific branding process, and, and we'll dissect that a little bit. 
And then I'm not going to talk for too long. I'm going to keep an eye on how long I'm going for because actually, so this is a, a heads up to you to start thinking about questions that you want to ask um, because I, you know, a lot of times questions that you have, other people are wondering and then I can answer them and benefit everyone. But yeah, I want to make this more about you. So we'll do a Q&A and, and before that, I'll, I'll teach you I'll give an overview on how to build a brand, how to build something to show for your passions. So working with clients in a lot of different industries, the branding process is exactly the same. First, we start by positioning the brand. I have a formula for that, which I'll give you in a second. So first we position, then we build, build something to show for it and then we promote in that order. A lot of times, actually if I could get my slides again and I'll, I have little icons for this and they're so cute. Get ready for cuteness. Okay, position, build, promote. Very simple. Position your brand, build something to show for it, and then promote it. A lot of times clients jump to this last step before they have something really good to sell. So they'll come to me and they'll say, Phil, I have this brand and I want to market it on social media. And then I have to politely tell them, no one cares about your idea. It needs to be repositioned slightly so that people will actually pay attention to you because internet users are the worst kind of users, shortest attention spans possible. So a lot of times we're reworking. Jumping right to promote is kind of like taking a house to market before you've, before you've put a roof on it. You're only gonna get a fraction of the value that you deserve, so sometimes we need to renovate the house, we need to stage it, and then we take it to market and make lots of money. So let's go back to the very first step, position. Positioning your brand, simple formula. Something you love paired with something others need. If you've watched my videos or 10 of my sessions, you should know this off by heart. In fact, you should be able to come up here and teach it to others. So positioning your brand, formula, something you love paired with something others need. Something you love on its own is great, but we call that a hobby. A hobby won't make you money. And a hobby is not necessarily a business. So if you're building a brand, we're thinking of you as a business, you can have a product, you can have a service, but at the end of the day, you are a big part of what we're selling. There's no getting out of that. You're a part of this. We need to think of this in business terms, something you love so that you're happy doing this for the rest of your life. You create a job that doesn't feel like work. Wouldn't that be nice? All of you have the ability to do this. Something you love paired with something others need and are willing to pay money for. That's the goal. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> so think about that. Write that formula down even if you know it, and I want you to revisit this formula frequently, at least once a year. But as students, I would say at least once a month because you're here, you're at full sale. It's giving you the opportunity to reflect and think critically about what is it that I want to do with my life. And it's the best position to be in because you are in the driver's seat. You make the decision to go take a boring job, which I don't think you should do, P.S., or you go and manifest something on your own. And I also think on entrepreneurship, I actually never thought of myself as an entrepreneur. I had students at the Career Expo yesterday that came up to me and said, I said, what is your brand? What are you doing? What do you love to do? And they said, I'm passionate about entrepreneurship. And I was like, okay, what does that even mean? You know, This term, I hate the term entrepreneur, entrepreneurship. It's something that I never, ever intended to do. I was an accidental entrepreneur, if you will, but I think that term gets a lot of weight and I think it's kind of an annoying word. Entrepreneur, there's almost like that desperate feel to it. I really don't like that word. So think less about being an entrepreneur, that's not your brand. 
think more about what is it you do that's different and how will people care or why will people care about what you're doing? So you've got the formula for positioning your brand. Let's talk about building something to show for it. Once you feel good about what it is you're doing, you've come up with a name for your brand and then you, know, you might name your brand after you. It might be like I did. Um, it's nice kind of to name it after you because that's something that's never going to change, right? So you position your brand. Let's talk about building something to show for it. In this order, I typically start with photography. Then we build a brand identity. So your logo, your fonts, your colors, anything that makes up your visual identity as a brand. So photography, visual identity or brand identity. Then your website, which you can create using those assets. Then your social profiles. Update your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever your priority platforms are to really reflect who you are and why people should care. That's the question that you are constantly answering. Every single day, you're answering that question. Who are you? Why should people care? So building something to show for it. Photography, which in my opinion is your, is your secret sauce. I know this from building brands for clients all around the world in a lot of different industries. Photography is your opportunity to stand out. And I'm sometimes tasked with the responsibility of explaining to an accountant why they need photos of themselves. <laughs> because other people aren't doing it. It's your way to stand out. And by the way, you're at Full Sail where there are amazing creative minds, amazing photographers that will help you out. You're here, take advantage of that. This community builds very, very talented people that are destined for success. These individuals are all gathered here. They're congregated, so take advantage of that. I'm constantly telling, actually, entertainment business by show of hands is an entertainment business. Great. So good choice. That's what I did and graduated from. But I often joke that it's kind of, we kind of feel like it's the least exciting program here because, you know, there's show production and the recording arts and, like, all this exciting stuff. And then you get to, like, sit in a boardroom. That's the, the big finale, you know. <laughs> but you're smart because you're going to make more money than everyone else. So good choice. <laughs> but... I often encourage, you know, particularly students in entertainment business that might be, yeah, might be less showy than some of the other programs, uh, make connections with people in the other degree programs, photographers, videographers, all kinds of writers, all kinds of fascinating people on this campus. There's a good chance to build those connections now, and they might be colleagues, they might be business partners, months out from graduation. I still work, I mean, I, st I, I work with people that I went to school with at Full Sail, I hire full sale grads every single month as my business grows. But take advantage of that. You're, you're here for school, but school's kind of like the excuse to get together and, and you know, sit in a classroom and show up and, and engage. But you're not really here to learn stuff out of a textbook. You're here to start building your brand, start building your business now and make those connections that can really land you a very successful and rewarding career. So position, build, promote is the last one that I'll, you know, throughout the throughout Hall of Fame, check out my sessions and I'm gonna dive specifically into how to promote your brand. But really, I wouldn't give that more attention than it needs at this point because a lot of times you're reworking the positioning in the building. That's really what you need to think about now Promoting it is easy if you've built something awesome to show for who you are, right? Just being active on social media, being out there on platforms like uh, Twitter, platforms like LinkedIn. I, I, every time I talk about LinkedIn, I laugh. I think about you, Pat, because Pat, who did my intro, you were the first one who told me about LinkedIn. I was, um, it was one of the first classes at Full Sail, and Pat came in and welcomed everyone and said, if you're not on LinkedIn yet, make sure you're on it and you get to 500 contacts as soon as possible. And I was like, LinkedIn, what is that? That's like really making me show my age. But um, 
You know, all these platforms, these social media, you can promote your brand. But if you build something, you've positioned yourself properly, then really you're just communicating that. You're, you're putting yourself out there. And if you've built a memorable first impression, that's the easy part. One more thing that I'll, that I'll encourage you to think about are the skills that you already have, likely as a millennial, and even if you're not a millennial, you're still surrounded by them, so you're an honorary millennial. But a lot of these skills that are every day for you can be monetized. Every single person in this room could get work tomorrow in social media, for example. I mean, you need to know, you know, you need to learn strategies, you know, advertising, social media campaigns, content creation. But the skills that you have just from growing up in this age, this digital age, are skills that can be monetized. You could make a career. So you're so focused on these job postings, it's starting to irritate me, when actually tomorrow you could create a digital agency, right, and, and, and help companies where it's not a second nature to them create content on their social media. And you could do it like I do from Mexico City if you feel like it. You know, so that should be encouraging to hear as someone who works and hires grads, the fact is every single person, and I'm looking at you in the eyeballs, every single person in this room can do that tomorrow. The skills that you have by this becoming se second nature, those are skills that can be monetized. And, and think now about not just social media, but even things that you're really passionate about. You need to be thinking now about how do I build something to show, how do I position, build, and promote something to show that is something that is based on your passion, paired with a need. And the last thing before we, I'll, I'm gonna open it up to questions soon because I bet you've got amazing questions brewing. By the way, are you following me on Twitter? Because if not, I'm not impressed. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Make sure you tweet me, that's your homework, send me a tweet so that I can, you know, check you out and reply. Um, but the last thing that I'm going to kind of say before opening it up to questions is some advice that I've learned that I, you know, how I've done all of this stuff on my slides, how I've accomplished all of this is strictly through branding, strictly through branding. Branding, not necessarily who I am at that exact time, but I think back to that elevator exchange of me saying I'm a celebrity brand expert, when really I wasn't. <laughs> I was calling myself a brand strategist way before I was qualified to have that title. I just liked that title, it sounded fancy. I called myself that before I was qualified to be called that. You wanna know why? Because I wanted to. And I'm in charge of, I'm the boss of me, and so I'll do whatever I want. And so I wouldn't be in that position if I just went and worked for someone else, you know? And that's what I thought I had to do, but I didn't end up doing that. My advice is that you should be branding not necessarily who you are right now, but who you want to become. Because branding will become a very powerful business tool if you let it work for you, okay? So brand who you wanna become. I don't really wanna hear that you're a student and an aspiring fill in the blank. It's kinda lame. Commit to who you wanna become. Don't lie, but you can be strongly inspired, you know, by what other professionals are doing in your space, and you can start to build that brand now, I don't know why you would wait. I don't wanna hear that you're uh, an aspiring filmmaker, an aspiring writer, an aspiring comedian. That's desperate, and we wanna play hard to get. All of a sudden, this became dating advice, just kidding. <laughs> you know, you wanna play hard to get. You want to be that now. And, and, and I think what I'm trying to tell you is that by committing to that, you can manifest it. So, so before I was a celebrity brand expert, um, I said that that's what I was so that it would happen, 
okay? And so think, who are you now? And evaluate that by going through those steps of building a brand. But know where you're going with all of this. Be very clear on your goals. It's the first question I ask anyone that wants to work with me. For example, I'll say, what's your goal? Because I can't give you advice or point you in the right direction unless I and you are crystal clear on your goal. What is it you're trying to achieve? The more specific, the better. In fact, the more specific you get, the more likely others will help you achieve that. We're gonna get to questions in about one minute. I first have to tell you a story. Um, a little story about my dear friend, Charlisa, who I met for the first time. What was that, about eight months ago, I think I was on campus for a PAC meeting, I'm on the board for the entertainment business, bachelor's and master's programs. They, they bring a few of us together from the industry to look at the curriculum, see what's happening with the, the course. And part of this exercise was going and visiting a classroom where we met students. And I met about 30 students. Some of you were included probably in that classroom. And I met Charlisa in the second group. We had two minutes with each group. And I met Charlisa, and she said, um, hi, Phil, I'm Charlisa, and I want an internship. I said, great, tell me more about you. And she knew the answer to that question. She told me who she was in one sentence. And she reminded me so much of my friend Amber. So much so that I said, well, you want an internship? I know exactly who I'm going to forward you to, my friend Amber in Washington, D.C., who's a seven-figure business coach, very successful, amazing, confident. I love her. And that day, because Charlisa was so clear about her, what she wanted and where she was going, what her goal was, that day, I introduced her to Amber by email. Within a week, she had an internship with Amber. Boom! Did I just blow your minds? That's the power of this, right? So think that that happened on this campus. So that, you know, that should inspire you to really think about what is it you're building? What's your goal? How am I positioning myself? What am I building to show for it? And how am I gonna promote it out to the world? The more clear you are on that, the more others, like me, can help you actually achieve that. So those are my words of wisdom for you today. Let's open it up to some questions. That'll be fun. What do you think? Yeah. 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 Okay, Phil. <laughs> so um, we have a few minutes for questions from our audience. So if you have a question for Phil, please raise your hand and a microphone will be brought to you. For those of you joining us online, please direct your questions to our online moderator who will try to accommodate any questions you have. Hi. Uh, hey. I just had one quick question for you. Um, you mentioned before that traditional resumes definitely aren't the way to go uh, if you're trying to build a personal brand. Um, my question to you is um, what mediums would you suggest uh, if that's the case? Just from, so that's a great question. Um, I've made it pretty clear that I am not a fan of traditional resumes. I don't necessarily speak for everyone. I wish I did but I don't. There are still some people out there, depending on what it is you're going after. For example, corporations are a lot more traditional than I am, and so they'll want a resume. So for example, I remember at Full Sail, I, one of the internships that I went after was one with NBC in New York, and that was a pretty, I mean, they get a lot of applicants, so I had to submit a resume, and I, you know, a lot of times now resumes you have to like copy and paste them into an online resume so you get entered into a database. So I'm not necessarily everyone, but my advice is knowing that every position you apply for, if that's the route you're going, a lot of others are also applying for it. How can you, within your own right, how can you stand out from everyone else? 
And that's not, a, there's, that, that's not necessarily a simple answer. There's not a blanket statement that I can just issue. Here's how to stand out, right? It depends on a lot of things. It depends mostly on you. But I'm challenging you to think about how you can do that. And the internet is your oyster. I mean, I love reading about people who get hired from interesting ways. Like I've read about people who've booked jobs from Facebook ads, you know, not necessarily, you don't have to go do that. But that's very unconventional. So unconventional that whoever did that got press about it, and now I'm on stage talking about it. But I guess their brand wasn't that memorable because I don't remember their name. <laughs> but point is, you know, challenge yourself to think, how am I gonna stand out from all these other mediocre losers so that I get the job instead of them? Very simple. Good. Yeah. Thanks. Of course. Good question. Who's yeah. next? Right here. Well, oh, where am I looking? Mike, right. Oh, yeah. you're back here. Great. Yeah. Good hair, by the way. Right Memorable. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. That's actually what I'm about to ask you about. So, uh, like six months ago, I started this uh, brand for myself, which is obviously the Afro. And I started doing everything uh, Afro related. So that's I love my it. business card. So my question is, um, well, I have two questions. The first question is, uh, is the only reason for a brand recognition so that people can recognize it when they see it? Um, and the second question is, I totally forgot. But <laughs> yeah, that's the main question. Yeah, um, I think that's a big part of it. I think a big part of having a brand is recognition in the sense of creating a memorable first impression. In my opinion, and a lot of experts define branding in a lot of different ways, my definition of branding is recreating the in-person experience. Branding gives you control over the first impression that you leave with people. And so, I would go so far as to argue that branding is no longer a luxury or an add-on, if you will, you know, that only fancy people have. Branding is now a responsibility that you have as a citizen of the world in 2017 by not having a brand, by not having a website, you are giving up control to Google, right? You're giving up control, because whether you like it or not, people are gonna look you up. By having a brand, by having a website, by building something recognizable, like Mr. Afro, I don't even know your name, but I bet it's great too. What's your name? What is it? Okay, I like that. <laughs> you know, but you're, you're, you are crafting that first impression right now. And so by having a brand, you are becoming a control freak in the best way possible by actually having a say over how people consume you. Because if you don't have a website, you don't have a presence on social media, then you're letting others decide your fate. You're letting others decide how they're gonna interpret you. And I don't know about you, but I like to have control over those kinds of things. So that's the advantage of having a brand, is that it gives you control over the first impression others get from you. Does that make sense? Great question. Too bad you forgot the second one. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we now? Where is my... I put contacts on my case. Still can't see anything. Hey, what's up? Hi. My name is Philip Mullings. I'm an actor in the film production master's program. Yep. And Great. And I want to know how I build a brand as an actor, filmmaker, and how can I work with you specifically and become one of your clients? Ooh, look at you go. Great. <laughs> You've got a great voice, by the way, so that's a good start as an actor. Um... That's a good question, um, and in fact, the answer is relevant to everyone in this room if you don't want to become an actor. I'm particularly interested in, in actors, TV hosts specifically, because that's how I started my career, and there's something that can be taught within that. So certainly, the three branding steps are really important in that order. I know it's, I mean, I made those three steps, but it's proven to work in a lot of different industries. So approach it in in that order, but 
Specifically for acting and for hosts, that was my world for a few years. When I first moved out to LA, um, you're, you know the story, I got fired, and then I started working with the self-proclaimed queen of TV hosting in LA, and she said, I like you and I want you to help me build my brand, and then eventually I started teaching in, in her school, um, working with hosts and actors on building their brands so that when they would go in, into an audition, how are you going to be more likely to book the job, not based on you, but based on the audience you bring to the table? So I have clients and friends that have booked jobs, not just on their extraordinary talent and ability as a host or an actor, but because they go into that audition, they go into that opportunity bringing them, but also an audience to the table. And I can tell you, and I, I obsess with having frequent conversations with gatekeepers, decision makers, agents, managers, casting directors, LA, New York, Nashville, all over the place. London, I work a lot in England. I obsess over having conversations with some of these decision makers to make sure all of this advice I give people is accurate. And in fact, I hear back so often what I teach, which I love, and that is people now are booking jobs because they bring an audience to the table. You're more likely to get a job by bringing an audience than by bringing top-notch talent. So people are getting booked because even if they're not super talented, we can work on that before they go, you know, if it's a TV show or whatever it is. We can train you to become better, but what we can't train you to do is build an audience overnight. So someone with, you know, 100,000 Twitter followers and mediocre talent is more likely to book a job than someone who has no followers and extraordinary talent. So that's, that's kind of the role that I play. And that's what I've learned. So specifically for acting and for, for TV hosting, anything creative like that, you want to think now about how you bring an audience to the table so it sweetens the deal for that opportunity. Yeah, where are we going next? Hey. Uh, I have a question from online. Um, Doug, a game development grad, he's wondering if you have any specific recommendations uh, while building a website, like any tools or anything specifically. I love this topic. Thank you, Doug, for asking. I love this topic. And by the way, I'm gonna answer the second part of your question on how you can work with me. I didn't forget about you. I'll answer that question at the very end. So for Doug, let's talk about websites. For Doug and for everyone in the room and online, I have some very tangible tips I can give you right now on building your website. Don't worry unless you're a coder, unless this is what you're in school for, then you should build it from scratch. But if you're not, don't worry about building a website from scratch. Instead, use a platform like Squarespace. They should be paying me to say that, and they're not. I'm a little bitter about that. But I recommend Squarespace to a lot of people because nowadays that's the only platform I'm building client websites on. Unless, of course, they need more customization with e-commerce, um, then we'll use a platform like Shopify. But even Squarespace is great for e-commerce. But I would recommend using a platform like Squarespace. There are others, too, um, all kinds of platforms, Weebly, um, what else? Wix, thank you. Yeah, Wix, Weebly, WordPress. I happen to love Squarespace because a lot of the decision making is done for you. They create parameters for you to work within, so you can't, you know, customize it. It's not limitless, but I actually like those limits and parameters because it helps you make decisions faster. Their templates are really beautiful. If you have great photography, if you have crappy photography, it's not going to work out too well. But uh, put, the, put the effort into making sure you have awesome photos, a great brand identity. If you're a student and you can't afford to hire a graphic designer to build an awesome logo, put your name in a great font for now and work towards saving to actually be able to develop your brand identity. Um, so use a platform like Squarespace and Create the fewest number of pages possible on your website. 
You've learned by now that I'm a bit of a control freak, and I know a lot of people in the audience are and should be. So I believe that by having fewer pages on your website, you retain more control over what people see, how people consume you. If you've got a website with 30 pages, me, the user, I'm only gonna click like three or four. And by you presenting me with 30 options, you're giving me control over what I'm gonna click on. And that's scary, because I'm not really qualified to make that decision. You're the one that should be making that decision for me. How? By having a simple, easy to navigate website with maybe five pages is normally what, you know, the standard. Home, about, projects or services, anything that dives into what you offer. Portfolio is a good one. Home, about, portfolio, or work. Of course, you can modify the names of any of these, except for about. Usually keep about and contact. Let's do this again. Home, and I'm not going to interrupt myself this time. Home, about, portfolio. Do you notice how I say about very American now? If I was still had a Canadian accent, I'd say a boot. <laughs> I know. I interrupted myself again. I said I wasn't going to. <laughs> Home, a boot, portfolio, blog, contact. About should usually be first. Contact should usually be last. We can modify this, but these... I'm just following protocol. Typically, people like to recognize page names. Don't get crazy with naming them all kinds of weird things, because people just won't click them. So your page name should be pretty st streamlined, and I just would have the fewest number of pages possible. Because by having less pages, you retain more control. You increase the likelihood that people are going to click on every page. That's my advice for creating an awesome website. Photography is king. I have uh, one more. I have Anthony Raposa, uh, sports marketing and media. I love Anthony. <laughs> uh, he was asking, when interviewing or getting to know a candidate, what stands out to you when you talk to them? What makes them stand out to you? That's a cute question, Anthony, because I Skyped with him last week for a job interview. <laughs> he's cheeky. I like what he's doing. <laughs> Um, what stands out to me? Tangible skills, which at Full Sail, you have the opportunity to learn in your classes and outside your classes. It was tangible skills that I even started to build by doing my Charlie Sheen social media campaign that I told you about at the very beginning. If you're late to the game, go back and rewatch this. <laughs> but tangible skills is what um, makes me hire someone. Um, for example, my company is pretty small. I keep it that way because I don't want adult responsibilities. Maybe when I'm 30, I'll grow up bigger, but I kind of like having the freedom to work from wherever I want. So it's important to me, having a small company, a small business, that everyone can do multiple things. So for example, if I'm hiring a project manager, that project manager also needs to have experience running Facebook ads because then I don't have to hire two people, I can hire one person. I wanna give a shout out to two Full Sail grads, and I'll tell their stories actually tomorrow here, 9 a.m. Uh, Wednesday. Um, Pat, when we do the session on social media strategy, I'm gonna tell the story, actually I'm gonna give them an opportunity, I'm gonna put them up on the screen and they're gonna give advice to you that they wish they knew when they graduated. I thought they'd be fun to talk to because I hired them. So I want their advice to give to you on what they did that made me decide I'm going to hire you. Um, but I hire them. I can tell you now that I hired them because they had tangible skills. Shout out to Alex Aldana and Dalton Kaufman, who I've since hired because they came to the table saying, yes, Phil, I can write social media content. I can make videos, but I can also use Photoshop. You don't need to be an expert, for example, making quote cards for Instagram or, you know, doing quick little tasks. They're not experts in it, because I think actually, I know Dalton, for example, did um, communications at Full Sail. He's not an expert, but he still has a laptop with Photoshop installed on it, and he knows the basics of how to do it, and he's willing to learn how to do it. But the fact that he can do those things makes my life easier. 
And that, I think, is, is what I'm looking for. If you don't have tangible skills, writing, for example, can get you a job if you're a good writer. If you're not, keep writing every single day to get better. Writing, design, tangible skills were what allowed me to graduate full sale and start a business. Because people didn't hire me because they thought I was cute. People hired me because I could help them build a website. And I could do that myself, even if it wasn't great in the start. I got jobs because I could help them with tangible things that people needed. So think really critically about what are your tangible skills. Because I don't really care too much about your goals and aspirations. I care more about the project that's due tomorrow than I need to hire someone to help me finish. That will get you a job. Good question, Anthony. And timely, given that I Skyped to them last week. Yeah, where are we going next? Uh, over here. Uh, earlier in your, uh, in your presentation, you talked about having good, solid, specific goals in mind. What yes. is the difference between a good, worthwhile, useful goal and a useless goal? Yeah, I love that question. I love that question because a lot of times I'm distinguishing between the difference, uh, the difference between a goal and an action. And that's something to think about. I think everyone knows the answer to that question in this audience. But a goal can sometimes be exactly that. It can be useless. Um, but I think if you think really critically about what is, the, what is where do you want to be one year from now? Where do you want to be five years from now? I don't really like those questions, but they're important to answer, right? There's so many variables that you really can't actually answer them to the point where you know exactly where you'll be in a year or even five years. But to go through that exercise of, 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 of really forcing yourself to think, what is it I want to manifest? What do I want? That kind of self-reflection will help you build the path to actually achieve it, right? If you don't know the answer to those questions, then you've really got to think. You've got to take the initiative to spend some time with you, yourself, to be able to answer those questions. So for me, a useful goal, the difference between a useless goal and a useful goal is something that's action-oriented. So what's the goal? What's the action you can take tomorrow to achieve it? And I have a good segue, actually. If I could get my slides one final time, and this I'm finally going to answer your question about how we can work together. But I've decided, um, some of you heard me talk about this, but I launch, I'm so excited about this, because Phil Palin Collective has been the agency that I've been building for the last few years. But now, finally, today, I mean, to the rest of the world, I launched this out March 3rd. Uh, to the rest of the world, I'm launching Phil Palin Academy. I built an online community and membership website. That's a polite way of saying it's not free. <laughs> to the rest of the world, I launched Phil Palin Academy on March 3rd. And to the rest of the world, um, it will be $49 a month. But to Full Sail, 49 students that sign up I'm using you as my guinea pigs. It'll be $49 for a year. I do not make money on that, by the way. But I'm launching Phil Palin Academy. So if you're a full sale student, if you want to continue to learn to build your brand, be accountable, be a part of this community that I'm building. I would love for full sale students to be a part of it. That promo code is really important. Otherwise, you would get charged the full thingy. But your students, you don't want to do that. So that's something, that's a way to keep in touch with me. Uh, it gives me, for the first time ever, the opportunity to kind of mentor you in more of a group environment, but I'm doing I have videos that launch every single week. I have a live training call that's an hour and a half, same time as this, once a month. I've really built this because it was inspired by what I do when I come to Full Sail, and that is interact with all of you, listen to what you're trying to achieve, and to give you advice to make this happen. So I'd love for you to be a part of that. Um, that's where you'll find it online and uh, here in person. 
Find me on Twitter, at Phil Palin, Snapchat, Instagram. I'm all over it, baby. Find me, message me, make a contact, let me know what you're building, tell me your brand in one sentence, and that's a smiley face to remind me to wrap it up. Thank you so much for coming out this morning. If you're here in person and online, it's been a real pleasure, and I look forward to meeting you, tweeting with you, and seeing what you build to show for your brands. I'm very excited. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Letting me kick off Hall of Fame. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for attending our session. And we especially want to thank Phil for sharing his knowledge and valuable information. Happy Halloween. Happy to do it. Thank you, Pat. <laughs>